Welcome back to the show. Jason Bone Grant is here once again from Anxiety Center KC. And uh, that's anxietycenterkc.com. He's the CEO and Clinical Director of Adolescence, the Anxiety Center at Renew Counseling Center. Is that correct? Yes, that's all. Yep, that's that's who we are. <laughs> oh, perfect. Well, please introduce yourself to our listeners. So I am Jason Bone. I've been working with adolescents uh, and their parents uh, at least 30 years now in some form or fashion. Um, I run an intensive outpatient for young people struggling with school avoidance, uh, suicide ideation. Um, I have four wonderful children, uh, a beautiful wife, Corey, who actually founded the center that I get to work in and, um, and, and just enjoy it, even though it's hard, it's I, I enjoy the work that we do serving families and young people. Great, absolutely. So uh, just to ask, uh, where are you located and do you work with people only in your state or how does that work? Yeah, so we're located in Olathe, Kansas. Our programs serve the Kansas City Metro, which is you know right in the middle of the country uh, kind of thing and aren't doing virtual. Virtual in Kansas has some interesting laws around it. So trying to, to reach and support other families through things like this radio show and information on our, our website, boldparenting.online. Got it. Okay, great. Well, also, uh, the Anxiety Center, I uh, just want to point out here, so again, you're dealing with adults as well as adolescents, correct? Yes, we have a, a an intel, adult intensive outpatient practice or and that meets three evenings a week. We have the adolescent uh, program that meets four afternoons a week. And then as a center, we provide individual, couple, family uh, counseling uh, across, and, and dietitians. So we have, we, we do work with eating disorders and have dietitians on staff also. Perfect. All right. So um, now, Jason, I have a, an email here with some specific notes for you, but unfortunately, I'm not able to open the attachment. Uh, okay. So would you mind just, uh, I want to make sure we're getting to everything it is that you need to today. These were sent specifically to me, but unfortunately, I can't open it. <laughs> Can you just ask those in? I'm sorry, do what? Fill me in. I have had oh. the attachment that was sent to me. It will not open on my uh, computer, so I don't know exactly, you know, obviously, the details of your show for today, your specific topics. Yeah, I want to talk about defense mechanisms. Um, and so defense mechanisms in all of us, but especially adolescents, are, are just behaviors that we see that could look like, um, you know, boundary testing that we talked about last week, but are actually anything done to avoid feelings and especially pain. So so that's the topic I want to run through and, and see if I can help explain that a little bit better and then maybe some ways to um, maybe some ways to fight through those. Great. And if anyone has any questions, we open in the lines for you today. So six three one two seven one eight four zero if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to give us a call. So go ahead, Jason. All right, so last week we, we talked about a couple of the reasons your adolescent might be acting the way they do. They, they could be testing your boundaries, your parental authority, or there, there might be a skill that they developmentally need that they haven't, haven't, you know, they just haven't mastered it yet. They're not good at that particular skill. Either way, their behavior is serving a purpose, uh, which is a fundamental pro principle of human development. We, we posted both of those episodes um, on boldparenting.online and with some slides and with some written materials too. Um, one of the skill deficiencies to, to go in that direction that many, many adolescents and most who are struggling is the, the DBT or dialectical behavioral therapy, which is one of our models, uh, skill of feeling your feelings. Um, it sounds it sounds pretty simple, and it sure seems like most teens are constantly feeling some emotion. You know, they're stressed, they're overwhelmed, they're depressed, they're anxious. Uh, and that is true. Adolescence is just a, a time of big, big emotions. However, in, in, in struggling teens, many of those strong emotions are masking emotions that that block core feelings. So they're, they're feeling this really strong feeling. It's kind of like they're they're wearing that emotion on a mask on the outside, but it's blocking their authentic self. Um, and and they've, they've learned, um, because they've practiced these things, to avoid painful feelings for so long that they can't actually accurately gauge what their feelings are, what they like. Um, 
And that leads into right into the avoidance cycle because they're avoiding emotions, they're avoiding responsibilities, they're avoiding interactions with people who might be able to help. And so we, we hit on the dark side of avoidance a couple of weeks ago, which is also a bold parenting dot online. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes avoidance looks like a young person not doing anything, you know, or avoiding, they, they can look like they're do, not doing anything, but frequently, and especially in when trying to avoid or cope with pain, both physical and emotional, avoidance can be a very, very active process. Um, I kind of think of it like Wonder Woman brandishing her arms around to block or defend bullets from hitting her or other people. Um, and so since Vinny, you know, teens just don't have magical bracelets, they, they tend to protect themselves from painful emotions or interactions with defense mechanisms like humor, rebellion, changing the subject, ignoring, escaping, cutting, or, or pessimism in some cases. We, we consider a defense mechanism to be anything done to avoid feelings. That makes sense so far? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I think a lot of us have experienced that for sure and know of others as well. Yeah, I, I actually was going to go, as a teen, I, I struggled with self-doubt and with creating a healthy, positive concept of who I wanted to be. So I defended myself with humor. Someone might notice something about me that I didn't want to share or feel in that moment. And I would make a humorous remark to deflect and redirect that conversation to safer or, uh, you know, more emotionally comfortable areas. Um, you know, and, and, and sadly, I was blessed with a quick wit and decent comedic timing, and which meant the person talking to me would be amused or laugh and immediately move on from the topic because I appeared fine. Um, this defense or coping mechanism became became self-defeating, and this happens in teens, became unhealthy uh, behavior as I learned to avoid almost all unpleasant feelings and couldn't always recognize even when I was fe really enjoying something. Defending against any emotion becomes a defense mechanism against all emotions. So my own skill deficiency around feeling my feelings made, made my life situation worse, by interfering with relationships, my ability to feel joy, and and my my ability to feel to grieve at different times in my life. Um, every struggling teen that uh, I've worked with has some highly developed defense mechanisms. Um, again, as I shared earlier, adolescence is a time of intense emotions, so defending against painful thoughts and feelings becomes harder, and new mechanisms must be developed. You know, and technology is always there to help. Um, so the young person, it started off with a reasonably healthy losing themselves in a book to avoid some interactions or some feelings. You know, they become an adolescent and it becomes an incredibly strong urge to lose oneself in TikTok all night long. Um, and those parents that, are, are, that have struggling adolescents get that. Uh, TikTok, YouTube, some of the other social media is just so, it, it provides dopamine, it, it engages them, it makes them feel like they're connected, and, and it's just such a strong um, kind of thing that they, they really need to do it. Um, according to Hayes and, and Kariaki, which you know developed the, the thriving adolescent concept, DNAV, that we use, they suggest that our advisor, this inner voice, continually brings those critical negative thoughts about ourselves into our mind and triggering painful emotions which they'd rather avoid. So literally they can be sitting there and something can trigger a, a negative thought or experience in their life and, and they're actually trying to avoid it and their defense mechanism might come up against a parent or somebody else that really has next to nothing to do with it. I'm sorry, when did I lose you? No, it's okay. Yes, this is a joke. Just let you know, we lost you, and I just continued. I was able to have the station resend me your notes, and I copy and paste. So I was just going over your bio again, and uh, just telling everyone who you were, waiting to get in touch with you. So again, let's. Uh, where did you know where you left off exactly? I do. You have any idea what the last thing is you heard? Um, no, it's because I go into panic mode and I start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my board and I'm trying to figure out yeah getting your your, your notes from the station with perfect timing okay um, 
So I do you remember me? Defense mechanisms. I remember now. We're about avoiding feelings. We've all been through it, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Good. That's I. You know, I talked about how I struggled as a teen with some of that, and and it it interfered with my life. It it led to some unhealthy stuff. And teens are just. It's such a time of intense emotions, and so they they end up developing more and more um, strategies to avoid things. And sometimes, initially, when they're younger, that looks like losing themselves in a book, um, and that and that turns in their teen years as these emotions get stronger and the avoidance gets stronger into really strong urges to um, to attempt to, to use things like TikTok or YouTube or social media all night long. Um, to just distract themselves from their own thoughts. Um, the, the model we use, DNAV from Harry Hayes and, and Karaoke, um, Karyachika, I can't pronounce his name, suggests that our inner voice, our advisor, continually brings these critical and negative thoughts into our minds, and, and that can trigger these defense mechanisms and trigger emotions that we'd just rather avoid. Um, that advisor voice in a struggling teen can become so self-defeating that it clouds every interaction that young person has. Um, it can get so strong that even compliments from the outside get reinterpreted as attacks that need to be defended against. This seems crazy, but I see lots and lots of young people who can't accept compliments. Um, and they, they kind of go into that mode of fighting them off. As they come to recognize this advisor voice, we have the young people in our program write a letter, write it a letter to the, which is part of the unhooking process. I'd, I'd like to share one of those letters we just got in last week. I did this exercise. Sure. Dear advisor, you are never necessarily helpful to me. One moment you're telling me I'm wonderful and next you're calling me ugly and effing worthless and unlovable. You tell me that no one wants to be around me and you make me insecure. I often hate you. You're ruining my life, making me choose to make decisions and ruin good relationships. Throughout my whole life, you trick me into thinking I'm loved, cared for, and worth being here just to stab me in the back and tear me down piece by piece. You love to tell me how effing sensitive, dingy, and annoying I am and how much of a bother I am to anyone and everyone. You need to shut the hell up and change your attitude. Be more caring and stop making me feel like a piece of shit. Tell me I'm beautiful and unique and important, smart and kind, without turning around and saying the opposite. Make me feel loved. Um, quite frankly, we read like 10 or 12 of these in a row, and I wanted to avoid this young person's pain. Um, and it's my job to help them and their families learn how to, to deal with this pain that's inside them. So I can't... I can't even imagine, although I see and I hear a lot, I can't imagine how much and to what lengths this young person and other young person people are, are willing to go to avoid those feelings. And there's there's been, to some extent, a rash uh, in, in our county, double and triple the amount of suicides in the last couple of years. And, and that's an extreme attempting to deal with their pain. Um, I do know that this young person is not good at the skill of feeling their feelings yet, and that they have some pretty strong defense mechanisms that are making their life situation worse and urges that are leading to some really harmful practices being perpetuated. Um, as, as children become adolescents, more and more of these defense mechanisms look like boundary testing, and this is where it's really hard on parents. Um, we can't tell anymore if they're just pushing back and trying to grow into independence or if they're really struggling, you know, with some kind of inner turmoil. And almost all the young people are attempting to control something within the chaos pain that they feel and kind of see their lives to be. Um, Karen Pando Mars suggests um, a process for empathizing with and bypassing defenses. And I, I really like that concept of instead of attempting to directly engage a defense and, and logically fight through it, which is nearly impossible with a young person, um, but bypassing it. How do we how do we move around this? How do we under, help them understand it's a bypass? Um, and that starts with identifying the defense mechanism. All right. So we ask in our program, 
we ask young people and their parents to rate each of about 40 recognizable defense behaviors from one, which is, you know, that doesn't really impact my life to 10, which is significantly interfering with their life. Uh, I, I put that list up at Bold Parenting Online if, if somebody would like to look at that and, and try to understand it. But some of them are, you know, rebellion. I won't do what I'm told even if I get in trouble. Distraction escape. I'll play to avoid engaging with work. And, and video games and, again, TikTok and some of these things are really good at escapism. Um, codependence or attachment. I'll take any treatment to keep. Uh, to keep being loved, self-harm, cutting, I hurt myself to control pain. And so control is a really big one. So control, eating too much, eating too little, binging, purging are all control activities that really might be defense mechanisms against other, other things. Uh, willfulness, concealment, apathy, um, sleep, we regularly have young people that'll just say they sleep to avoid reality. Some of our really gifted young people, uh, like boredom is a defense mechanism, not knowing what to do with myself. I won't do anything. Uh, addictions obviously play a part in there. Um, and, and rationalization. I can convince myself I'm always right. Isolation is another one that a lot of families see. There's safety in not interacting. There's no risk if I, if I choose not to interact with people. Does, that, does the concept of defense mechanisms make sense? No, absolutely it does to me, for sure. I hope it does for all listeners. Yeah, I, I hope so too. It's a very challenging thing. And the next step, once you can recognize these as defense mechanisms, and, and is to start talking with the young people about the, the benefits of the defense mechanism. And that sounds crazy, but when you do this, what are you... What is it protecting inside the young person? Um, and, and also, when, when does the young person first remember using, needing this defense mechanism? Literally had that discussion with the, with the 12 young people in my group on Tuesday, and all of them could pinpoint a defense mechanism when we had asked them to do that, but they could also pinpoint when they started using that as one of their ways to try and avoid painful thoughts and feelings. Um, and, and that's a big step for these young people. Uh, these are not likely easy conversations. And I don't want to even suggest they're easy conversations for parents to have, because if it's built to a defense mechanism, it, it also likely means that the, the parents have developed some defense mechanisms um, to, to handle and work with their young people. Um, bold is one of those ways, and we'll, we'll hit on it a little bit more. And I what I do recommend and why we post the assessment online at boldparenting.com is that if you're seeing three or more of these defense mechanisms significantly impacting your family, quite frankly, the boldest thing you can do is seek out some professional help. Because um, it, it's, it's not, at that point, they've become so pervasive and so hard on the family that there's, there's other masking emotions, there's other interactions that have just become really negative in the family and it, and it probably needs some help to navigate how their way out of that. Um, wow. Yeah, so bypassing defense mechanisms in your young person requires both you and them to practice, you know, the L in bold, which is listening to your values, which, and here's where our values in our own head get mixed up because there might be two, there might be more, they're complex. Um, like one value is I want my kid to be respectful. All right. This re interaction was not respectful Two, I want them. I actually want them to complete this task, this chore, this schoolwork, whatever that happens to be. And then three, there's, there's the, I always, I love them and I care and I, I can see them hurting, but I don't know what to do. And you got, you kind of got all those values going on at once and, it, and, and not a good path to work through. So in that case, it's helpful to try and it's helpful to trying to listen to your values by B, breathing deeply and, and slowing down. Take a moment to observe your feeling, your thoughts and feelings. Are, are you an emotional reactive mind? Is there behavior, emotion, attitude triggering in some way to you? And triggering means that something external or internal is reminding us, usually subconsciously, about something that was or is still hard to deal with in our own lives. 
this trigger or threat response makes it harder to be in a wise mind place when interacting with your team. Um, I'm trying each week to bring up um, one of these breathe skills and share it with the audience. We've talked about square breathing and, and uh, five, four, three, two, one. Today, one mindfully is a DBT technique, and it's it's really what it says. And it's it's uh, can you focus on only one thing at a time? Almost all of us have watched TV and are on our phones or on our tablets. Um, we're you know multitasking at our computers. You know, I I know probably millions of people yesterday were multitasking and watching the inauguration at the same time they were supposed to be doing work, right? I know, I couldn't, I couldn't physically do it, but yes, I had it on in the background, so I couldn't watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so you, you get that, that you're not able to attend to both things at once. And our society, we, we just do this a lot and we kind of think it's normal. So one mindfully is focusing on one thing at a time. And you can practice this in steps, just a one minute here, one minute there. It really helps reduce anxiety and stress. Um, it, it helps you enjoy and get the most out of positive events because I will find myself distracted even when I'm enjoying time with one of my children because uh, I'm paying attention to my watch or something like that. Um, four steps to help with one mindfully is to focus on one thing at a time. Notice when you get distracted or your mind wanders refocus on one thing at a time and then repeat two and three as often as needed until you strengthen that one mindfully muscle that we all have to be able to turn it on and say i'm very focused i can get this done um and and or i'm right now i'm choosing not to be one mindfully and i'm just going to interact with lots of things so that's our our um bold or breathe um thought for this week and it, it leads into what it does is obviously it helps you recognize or observe your thoughts and feelings um, and the bold process gets you calm and in a wise mind place and allows you to use it when your teen is struggling so teaching your teen this teaching them some of these breathing techniques gets them to slow down um, and both of you then can recognize or you can ask this young person, um, what what are their thoughts and feelings that are going on? Um, I actually got to go through this last night with a parent. I do a parent support group and talk to about a mom about using bold, especially the listen to the values piece to help validate her son's extreme negative emotional responses brought on by a relationship ending, um, but not allow them to move further into the avoidance of relationship cycle. So a relationship goes bad, it brought on intense feelings. And then stand by, we have a call coming in. Sure. Hello, and welcome to the show. What's your name? Uh, my name is Sadiq. Good, Hi, Sadiq. Good afternoon, how are you? Good afternoon, you're live on the line with Jason Bone. Please ask any questions you may have. Uh, you know what, I was wondering if maybe you have a suggestion for me. I have anxiety in the morning, but before I go to work, when I get up after I take a shower, while I'm getting dressed, and you know, it, it seems to be there. It's, you know, I can't get rid of it. I was just wondering if you have any suggestions uh, for that. Sure. Um, and I'm, I'm going to bring it back because I, I mean, I do work with adolescents and their parents and the bold process would work for that too. Okay. So you're feeling anxious and this is what I shared with this mom and you know, you're having some strong emotions come up. Um, you know, if they keep getting stronger or you give in to them one day and, and avoid going to work because you're anxious and in the young person's case, that I'm talking about, they might start avoiding relationships. And we know they, they don't engage actively. Um, and so at that point you breathe, you do one of the breathing exercises we've talked about, square breathing, five, four, three, two, one, one mindfully. You observe what you're thinking and feeling. Uh, and then you listen to your values. All right, you're anxious, but it's important to your family that you go to work. It's important that you, you know, come downstairs or whatever that looks like and interact with your your spouse or your children because they are still important to you so you are acknowledging that you're feeling anxious and so this is how you would parent it you acknowledge that they're feeling these extreme emotions talk about and ask what they're thinking and feeling and then listen to their values what kind of person do you want to be what kind of person does this young person want to be and as they they think about their values that they want to be a good friend that they want to be 
an engaged boyfriend if that happens to be the case or comes up again. Uh, and they choose not to avoid it. They kind of lean into it and say, yeah, I'm feeling this, but it is still more important to me to move towards my values. Um, and so hopefully that would, would help you. And then after you, you listen to your values and the values that say, hey, you know what? You need to go to work and be productive. You go ahead and try to be one mindfully as you, as you get to work and you're being productive. Um, and so I hope, hopefully that was helpful. This, this mom, you know, just wants to help calm him down, but could understand and actually knows that swear breathing helps him. And then he could share these feelings. And mom, in this process, if you're trying to break through defense mechanisms, uh, you need to keep breathing and keeping yourself slow so you aren't reacting. Um, and most parents have really, really strong urges to use these kind of incidences or situations as, as teaching moments. It's time to give you some sage advice. Um, amazingly enough, teens are not found fond of, of receiving advice. It's not their big, it's not one of the things they go looking for very often. Um, but if she can listen to the values and she can share her values, she can help him develop the emotional grit and decide to act. Um, but the action for her is to help her son clarify his values about relationship and the person he wants to become. This gives him something to move towards in the future, in future relationships, instead of moving away or avoiding negative emotions that might come with thinking about the risk involved in having a relationship. And so that's the, the general principle is, can you use this process to move towards things that matter to you instead of keep allowing your body to move uh, away from things that um, are painful? So that's kind hey, of the... Good. Well, thank you for the call and I want to wish you the best and I'm sure Jason does too. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, and Jason, in closing, could you give our guests and, of course, our listeners the best form of contact? Well, our listeners, I would really recommend that they go to www.boldparenting.online yeah. and find these resources, uh, find lots of other resources, and they can find a way to connect with me and my program if they happen to be in the, in the Kansas City metro area. Perfect. Well, thank you again. We appreciate your time today. And... Uh, great topic. Thank you very much, Jill. Next, till next Thank week. Thank you. Have a good day. We got everyone else. Stay tuned. More of the show is on the way.